It's Wednesday night, March 27th, 2019, and this is a live stream from Decatur Makers Open Build Night. Warm welcome, Makers. We're coming to you live from Decatur Makers Makerspace in downtown Decatur, Georgia. You can find us tonight at 605 West Ponce de Leon and online at decaturmakers.org. Decatur Maker's mission is to be a welcoming, family-friendly community. Build, share, explore. For the last two years, our membership has hosted Open Build Nights on the second, third, and fourth Wednesdays of each month at 7 p.m. Come on by and check us out. Open Build Nights are open to all. You can bring a project. You can find a project. You can meet others, get a tour, ask questions, or even join in a group build. Stop in and check out our space and experience the magic. Hi, welcome to uh, Decatur Makers Open Build Night live stream. Tonight we have uh, three folks who are going to talk to us about their project uh, Mary Jane Leach, Dan Loudermilk, and uh, Bria Guayo. So I've been calling it the Water Trailer Project. Um, Mary Jane, can you talk to us a little bit about your inspiration and how, how do you refer to this project? I call it the Water Trailer Project too. Okay. <laughs> Occasionally the Water Station when it's stationary. Um, I am a member of the Decatur uh, Sustainability Board and we have been talking about something like this for about a year now. Um, in conjunction with you know kind of the plastic recycling crisis and all the major events that Decatur has um, in town which usually um, serve bottled water um, it's kind of a waste problem right now so we wanted to come up with a solution but all the solutions were very expensive um, to purchase or to rent um, and so you know knowing that there is uh, this tour of Decatur coming up with the Decatur Education Foundation and knowing that the makers can do just about anything, I just tried to connect the dots. I talked to Tour Decatur, um, uh, Decatur Education Foundation, Gail Rothman, the director, and, and I said, what if we built a station to water um, the 2,500 runners from your event and we brought together the makers, try to get some um, youth involved in the build, um, would you would your water sponsor be able to support that and she said yes absolutely we'll do whatever it takes to support that so uh came to a meeting uh put the call out to decatur makers um had some loose um constraints you know it needed to be portable it needed to serve 2500 people it needed to um not have too much mechanical um electric need um and uh really low budget if possible so dan showed up he had a lot of experience and expertise and then the idea started to roll so uh, i'm gonna hand yeah. yeah great so dan what um you did you just hear the call for makers who are interested in helping and then uh, step yeah. in or what yeah there, that was that was part of it and also it was something i could uh, when they mentioned something about reducing waste that's something I could really get behind. So you like that environmental? I'm a, well, I've been a, yeah, I'm an environmental engineer and worked at the sustainability division at the state until it shut down. So, yeah, I thought, well, this is something I could probably do. And uh, the tanks and water, and that, that's just kind of my field. So, um, yeah, when, uh, so when Mary Jane put out the call, I came in and we talked over various ideas. And uh, I guess just to make a... It wasn't that long of a story, but I started sketching some stuff up, and we finally uh, got down to some to where we could order the tank. And I think that was just like, okay, we're committed now. We've ordered the tank. So. Right. Now, originally, I thought it was like uh, tanks, and you guys moved to one tank. It was going to be one tank. Uh, thermos. One what do we call them? Uh, water was, water jugs. Yeah. Right. And uh, and and they still did end up using water jugs uh, because you know they're nice and portable, but um, well, at some point we realized, gosh, filling this whole thing with water jugs might just, maybe that's, a, maybe we can 
get one big tank and then just have a few, which is what we ended up yeah, doing. Yeah, maybe a better design. Do yeah. you, uh, when you say you sketch, sketch up, do you use pen and paper or do you use a Oh, no, I use a, I use a CAD program. You use a CAD program. Yeah, I use LibreCAD, which is, uh, you know, a, it's in uh, uh, Linux. So. Nice. Very good. Also, there's a Windows version too, so, but it started in Linux. So, and then when you had your design, you realized that we're going to need some metal work. Mm -hmm. Oh, we knew that before. Yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> how did you How did you recruit Bria into the mix? Well, I, I didn't, but Mary Jane did, so I don't know if, uh, if you want to talk to that. I had heard of Bria and her wonderful classes for youth and adults uh, teaching welding. So, But Dan knew what kind of weight would be supporting. We calculated that, you know, eight pounds per gallon and and that we would need a lot of metal work to to make this trailer which really didn't even have a top on it into something that could support that kind of weight so yeah we talked about wood and then we realized boy that would that would just look i said you know steel is just so you can make a lot slimmer stuff out of steel and, and i knew that i wanted to, to lift and not not be static and so metal is you know just seems to be the most obvious solution right. to that and Bria, how did you, when, when, uh, when you were approached, how did you sort of bring your special skill set uh, to making, making the water wagon happen? Well, um, well Mar Mary Jane contacted me and we met here and just talked about some of the ideas. Um, and it was when there was originally the coolers, the multiple coolers, which as we as it started developing um welding takes a certain amount of expertise and we wanted to have kids involved and so we were a little limited of how much welding we could do um so that when they decided to do the one tank i thought that was a great idea because i knew that it would just be less welding and um so we did have, originally we had some kids come and they used the plasma cutter to cut the piece of expanded metal to put at the top of the trailer. Really? Yeah, and they really had fun. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot of fun. Um, and so they did that. And then later, um, is the robotics team or? The second part was um, some girls from the Society of Women Engineers. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so they came and, um, you know, we had kind of a time constraint and I was going to go out of town at some point too. So I was trying to get as much of it done as possible. And so um, the girls welded the expanded metal to the frame and then I helped weld some of the supports. Um, they used MIG welding and I used stick welding. And so, um, I, you know, MJ got to see a couple different times <laughs> when we were doing it. Um, but I knew that, you know, when something is well, it's very strong and it can take a lot of weight. So I knew that would, that was, at least from my opinion, the best choice. Yeah, so that would work. For yeah, you but they had fun and it was a good, it was a good project. So. Yeah. So, and you actually have had, you've used it, right? Yeah. With success. Can you tell us a little bit about your inaugural launch event? Yes, we launched at the Tour Decatur on March 9th. Um, I pulled it with my vehicle to the Decatur High School Stadium, right there next to the Bulldog. And um, uh, you can look at the pictures. Um, um, the idea with this, with this tank is that you pull it empty um, and then you raise it when you get there. So I luckily had a lot of good volunteers to help raise it. And then we put some angle iron uh, for, for each post, um, a sizable four foot piece of angle iron to hold the tank up high for a gravity fed system. Yeah. Um, volunteers help clamp those so on. You raise it up and you raise fill it, up. it with water. Yes, we had a hose um, that we clamped into the top. The top is where you fill it and then the water comes out the bottom in two spigots. Um, actually, we plumbed four spigots. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Um, How much does the tank hold? The tank holds 150 gallons. So that's about 1,100 pounds of water up four feet high and then Actually, it's more like six or seven feet high because of the trailer. And then we had set up tables. We were ready 
um, more than ready for the, you know, 2,500 runners coming in from that five-mile run. Um, we had about total of eight volunteers. Some were setting up, some were filling cups. We developed a system while we were there to fill them really rapidly. The water pressure was pretty incredible with this tank, uh, using three-quarter inch um, plumbing um, pipe. And uh, so we had no no gap in service for the runners. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. it was really fun. Did you let them fill their own water bottles too? I thought that was one They did. There's several people on the Decatur Education Foundation had made a big announcement about this and how excited they were and, and encouraged people to bring their own water bottles. And so many people did um, bring their own water bottles. And so you have it set up also if people want to use it for their own events? That's right. We've already had two requests. Oh, that is yes, awesome. yes, yes. We're hoping to take it out to Streets Alive, perhaps, um, um, if they can find a water source. Um, and then also we've had a request from Girls on the Run, and they're going to have um, a run in next month. So. Very good. Yes. So um, you have some other plans for it? You were talking about maybe making a sign or oh, yes. decals or some sort of logoing right right um branding. we branding, branding. <laughs> yes um it's decatur education foundation wants to honor the partnership with a sign uh we hope to uh well bria says she might help make a frame for it or support for it and then we're gonna use uh probably the cnc machine and put the decatur makers logo uh the De decatur Ed education foundation and perhaps the city of decatur sustainability board yeah so, okay, so um uh, do you guys have um some uh contact folks if people want to get a hold of you or some shout outs or thank yous i'd like to thank the decatur education foundation for providing us with the photos oh so yeah can, although i guess they came from you but i got them from their facebook post. right well uh i think you could ta con ta uh, contact any of us through Decatur Makers, probably. But, Bria, would you want to... I'd love for people to know about Br Bria's uh, classes and welding. Um, and, Dan, did you have anything that you wanted to mention? I mean, I think we'll br be building a team of people who want to support this water trailer at events and learn from it and perhaps build more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, the best way to reach me is actually, yeah, through the Makers space. Mm -hmm. I can't... Unfortunately, I don't do this kind of fun stuff at my <laughs> job anymore. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah no, it's not a good place to go. Decatur Makers has a Twitter account at Decatur yeah. Makers. We have a Facebook right. account. We have Instagram. Yeah. So if you need to get a hold of I can be found. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also, um, when I had to leave, Doug is another member. He helped with the welding as well. Yeah. Um, uh, he's very helpful. Um, and I do do classes, like you said. I have a nonprofit called Becoming a Welder. So if anybody wants information, um, I give people information about welding. Um, and you can go to becomingawelder.com. You can contact me through there or you can contact me through the makers, uh, Decatur Makers, if you have any questions about welding. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks. So that, well, that's about it. Watch for, the, watch for the water trailer at your local 5K or Streets Alive event. And if you... Uh, Want to learn more about Decatur Makers? We're online at decatermakers.org. So get out there and make Thank it you. good. <laughs>
Friday, March 29th, Youth Welding Project Class. Saturday, March 30th, Leathercraft 101. Saturday, March 30th, Intro to TIG Welding. Saturday, March 30th, Glowforge 101. And Wednesday, 6 p.m., April 3rd, Decatur Makers 101, New Member Orientation. And Wednesday, April 3rd at 7 p.m., Decatur Makers Members Only Meeting. That's next week. There will be no live stream next week, but we'll see you again soon in the future. And hope you get out there and make it good.